This is just your weekly reminder that we post every Tuesday at 5 p.m. on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube for visuals. Um, you can now follow us on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, and Facebook at Nothing But Controversy. You can also go follow our new YouTube page called NBC Clips, where we post our shorter, funnier clips. Just uh, if you don't have time to watch the full episode, we post our best, like a little bit of our best content there. Um, and if you want a link to all of our social media platforms, go to our Instagram bio and click the link there for all of our bios. This is nothing but controversy. Four guys on a podcast and we're talking about sports. Four guys on a podcast and we're talking about sports. Nothing but controversy with Matt Dawson, Cam, and Shane. All right, so welcome back to episode 19 of the Nothing But Controversy podcast, and today we have a special interview. Uh, we got former Alouettes quarterback Tanner Marsh with us today. Thanks for joining us. Uh, we have like a bunch of questions for you, a bunch of t- speaking topics, but uh, we just want to say thank you for joining us again. Uh, we really appreciate having you. Yeah, of course. Thanks for having me, guys. I'm ready to talk a little shit, get this thing rolling. There Sweet. we go. Um, so basically whenever we have someone on, we like to talk like anyone like, like football related, we like to talk and like ask them about like, like you growing up playing football, like, like how did you grow before, like, let's say your, your journey to become an Alouette, let's say. Oh man. Okay. This is going to be a long one. Um, (laughs) now I am, I am from Texas. So, um, perfect. Yeah. Everybody take a sip of beer. Enjoy the long story. There we go. (laughs) Um, yeah, so I'm actually, you know, I'm from Texas, and so I played football in Texas my whole life. Well, um, after high school, um, I actually wasn't a superstar in high school. I only played my senior year, but balled out, had a interesting recruiting experience, uh, had a few D1 double A's off me, but a ton of D2s because I was really not mature. I was, like, tall and skinny and all that. Um, so I didn't have that many D big schools coming after me, but I broke – all types of records my senior year. I threw for over 4,000 yards as a senior in high school in one season. So, like, I, you know, I kind of came out of nowhere. And, um, you know, from there I went to Division II, uh, West Texas A&M. We played right next to cows. It smelled like cow crap everywhere. It was absolutely <laughs> the craziest experience I've ever seen in my life. I went from Dallas. I know y'all probably don't know anything. Imagine going from, like, Montreal to uh, – way up north like in the middle of nowhere right but even worse and uh, so then from there the school was amazing we played great competition we were nationally ranked it was awesome Uh, from there I played another D2 at Arkansas Tech Uh, then from there actually that was my senior year Um, I actually uh, so after that I was projected to get drafted out of uh, like the seventh round um but I went to tons of pro days I threw for as many NFL scouts as I could any I drove all around the nation just being like do you need someone to throw for you in this pro day and so I ended up throwing in four pro days which is like unheard of um just a small school guy trying to throw and then in the CFL I actually threw which is kind of a cool story my first CFL tryout was for the Toronto Argonauts and the guy it was for Chris Jones who was the DC at the time um, and then I went through for like BC and then I threw for Edmonton and then I threw for Montreal. Well, then, um, I don't remember one of them. We stayed in touch and it wasn't Montreal it was Toronto, I think. And, um, right when we were going back and forth, I got invited to, uh, Indianapolis Colts rookie mini camp, um, went there absolutely unbelievable experience it was it was crazy because you know Andrew Luck was there Matt Hasselback was there um just got to learn from like some freaking studs um it was a great experience got released there then uh went to I'm a Dallas guy so then I went to the Dallas Cowboys facility for like an hour they were considering uh signing me um but they didn't so I just got a tons of Dallas Cowboys gear which is a Dallas Cowboy grew up being a fan got it was such a cool experience. Um, have so much gear to this day. I still have like Cowboys gear on my ass. Um, so 
then I went – after that, I got a call, and I was just sitting there waiting around, and I didn't get drafted. Um, I sit there through the drafts, so and I was just like, geez, and didn't get picked up at all. But then I got picked up for the rookie mini camp in Colts. Well, then after all that kind of settled down, um, the Montreal Alouettes called me, and first off, in the CFL, they're just the communication level is is so bad. If you're just like a nobody, it's unbelievable. So I got a call, and they're basically like, "Hey, we want we want to fly you out to North Carolina. We have one more camp, like tryout camp, and we want to we want you to see. We're bringing kind of all these guys in. We want to see you throw against all these other guys." And I'm like, "Perfect, I'm in." So I pack for this camp that's supposed to be like one night. They fly me out to North Carolina. I show up with like a backpack with like a pair of underwear tights you know shorts two pairs of shirts yeah. nothing and so I throw for them immediately afterwards they're like yeah we want to fly you up the training camp in Montreal and I'm like uh okay cool so then I get to well rookie mini camp so then I go to rookie mini camp I throw and then I throw then I make the team after that then I have to do another tryout so through this like two week span, I probably have to wake up about every morning about 6 a.m. and throw till about noon every freaking day. Um, so I go out there for rookie mini camp. It lasts for three days. Um, I beat out the quarterback they brought in there. Then they wake me up again to go and throw against like uh, they brought in Dennis Dixon from uh, Oregon. They brought in another guy from University of Colorado. Uh, they brought in another great player that played in the seat. There's a ton of guys and I'm over here like exhausted. I'm like, man, I need a freaking beer. I ain't drank in like two weeks, like geez. And so I'm out here throwing my, my I can barely feel my arm. So I make it, I finally sign. And at this time, a rookie contract was like 42,000. At this point I was like, oh, I mean, I got nothing to lose. So signed it. And that's kind of how my whole career started off uh, with the Alouettes. It was, it was, a lot of throwing and it was a lot of just like things kind of working out in my favor and it was a headache and a half, but you know, one, one, one of the meetings in Montreal, they didn't even tell me about there. I just walked downstairs and they're like, Oh, there's a meeting right now going on. And I'm like, what the f- it's just <laughs> the whole process are really bad at communicating. Yeah. Like really for like that month, I had two pairs of shirts and two pairs of underwear and like one pair of shorts it was crazy and like the communication was just horrible but you know once I made the team it was a lot better but during that period it was just it was a it was a crazy ride but well worth it Mm -hmm. yeah so I'm a Colts fan so when I when I obviously and we're all from Montreal so we we knew the name but when I was you know doing some research into this I obviously saw you in the Colts helmet at the Colts mini camp and stuff like that and like you just said the the whole communication in the CFL was kind of bad how did like the Colts mini camp differ from, you know, an NCAA training camp, a CFL training camp? How different was the vibe in an NFL oh, facility? Oh, man, let me tell you something, dude. You don't even, <clears throat> man, it's crazy because like NFL guys obviously make millions and millions of dollars. How they blow so much of their money is, is crazy. Like you walk into this NFL facility, they have food all lined up. They have a breakfast bar. They have a chef in there cooking you food. They have some, if you want a massage, go with like, it's crazy. I'm from a D2, right? We didn't have all that. Like, we were yeah. lucky to get, like, a, a football shirt, two of them, you know. Yeah. And and to walk into this – and like, I walked in. They're like, what helmet do you want? What face mask do you want? Do you – what size do you wear? You want two cleats, three cleats? What do you want? And I'm just like, man, I didn't – I don't have to buy my own cleats. This is crazy. It was just – it was it was unbelievable. Like, they just they just treat you, like, top of the line. Um, mm-hmm. So, it's it was for sure a different experience because it was – it was crazy. It was, it was, you know, but it's also the people are different. Like, uh, you know, up there, once you get to that uh, professional level, people aren't really like, it's more of a professional attitude. Like you don't, you know, you do things more out of the best for yourself and what is the smartest move for yourself as an individual and your family, you know, rather than college, it's, you know, it's more about like the guy next to you and that. And so like the professional level, it just, it's still that it's still, you know, you still got to, you know, you're still trying to win because of course you make more money if you win. Um, Mm -hmm. But you know, it's still a little more, a little more individualized. That's awesome. And just one last question, you know, comparing the American and the Canadian game, Mm -hmm. obviously uh, my buddy Cam here is a quarterback, been a quarterback his whole life. How different is throwing a Canadian ball versus an American ball? 
Uh, the only difference is the leather. So the NFL yeah. ball, which is amazing, is the NFL ball is a uh, – the leather they have is patent. So no other football can have that same leather. Um, so the Good CFL ball. ball is the same size and everything. It's just different leather. That's very interesting. I didn't and, and if you don't throw a spiral with the CFL ball, everybody in the world knows. <laughs> yeah, that's – yeah. That, that's the biggest thing for sure. Like – yeah, but but the, that fresh powdered CFL ball is just something else. It feels so good. I'm sure you you always got fresh balls, but my my rookie year, uh, when I played with Anthony Calvillo, he had these ginormous hands, and he so back then in the CFL, when you open the box, the home team had to supply the balls, and so Anthony Calvillo loved like brand new, not broken in, right out of the bag. And back then, they see these balls were not good. They were like straight plastic before they were broken, and they were disgusting. But he loved them like that. So all the all the teams hated coming to Montreal and playing against us because the balls were so hard to throw. Because oh. AC loved them different than everybody else. Yeah, yeah. I think we all met him a couple of times. Uh, great guy, obviously. Had a, had a great career, obviously. Like that must have been cool to be under him for sure. Yeah, no, he's 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 a great guy, and he's. Probably the most impressive person that you look at, and you're like, "There's no way this guy can throw." <laughs> <laughs> you're just like blown away, like, "What the hell?" And I, I, I obviously played with him towards like the end of my career. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I, but even I'll never forget the first time I saw him throw a ball. I was just like, "What?" And then I saw him throw in, in during practice and like snipe in a freaking 15 yard dig, perfect pass. I was just like where the hell did that just come from? Like, yeah. it was crazy. So, for sure, interesting. Uh, great guy, but for sure blows your mind when he throws the ball. Yeah, like, when you're talking about Anthony Calvillo, you're talking about, like, a Montreal football god. Like, he's the GOAT of, if, of Alouette football when you think about it. like I would even go Canadian god. Like, everyone yeah. everyone who's ever watched, a, like, CFO for a little yeah. bit of time would know who he is. Well, that's how it is down here. People are like, oh, uh, what's that one quarterback's name? Uh, um, uh, he's Mexican. Uh, <laughs> oh, Anthony Cabo. Oh, yeah, 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 him. Yeah, I've seen him play. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. While we're, while we're on this topic, um, fair to say Marsh Madness was your, your craziest CFL play? Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean. Favorite play? What? Yeah, probably just because of all the hype around it. I have a ton. I, so when I was a rookie, I was like, the reason I was so successful is because I was just kind of like, if a play didn't work, I was really good at just improvising and kind of making a bad play good. Mm -hmm. Well, my first touchdown pass to SJ Green, it was really funny because uh, um, in the huddle, it was supposed to be like this crazy concept long play and I just completely butchered it and like <laughs> messed it up. Everybody was like, if you go back and watch my first game, BC, the Marsh Madness game, I actually miscalled a lot of plays because the formations were just wild. And um, uh, I like the guys were all misplaced and I just told everyone to line up and I looked at SJ and I was just like, SJ just win. And my first touchdown pass was just SJ winning and me just throwing it to him. And it's like yeah. a great play because I get hit afterwards and it looks all dramatic and I like <laughs> throw I like throw it into him and it was a great play. But you know, little did they know that it was more just like, hey dude, just win and I'll throw it to you, SJ. So that's crazy. I was at I was at the March Madness game and you know I had season tickets for you know a long, long time, but yeah. that had to be the loudest I've ever heard that stadium go. It was like all the AC years, the Ben Cahoon years, whatever, like that was the loudest I've ever heard the stadium. It was the craziest play I've ever seen there. So you, you a big part of my, uh, big part of my memory there in the uh, personal yeah, stadium. You know, it, was, it was a crazy experience because it was raining. So many people yeah. left. Yeah. And I've heard so many stories of people being like, you know, like, Oh, I left the game and then I came back. I was outside and I heard the stadium roar. So I ran back. Yeah. And like I've heard so many cool stories like that. And, you know, I absolutely love it. Um, but it's crazy. I don't know. Montreal Alouettes, I don't know what their deal is. Like, the moment I left, they were like, okay, we're shunning Tanner Marsh. We're never going to talk about that moment ever again. So, which is crazy because it's such a cool moment, like, not only for the Alouettes, but for, like, the fans. Like, it was such a cool, like, if you take, like, the past 10 years, that's a top five moment. In Easily. Yeah, yeah, Easily. yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Easily. And, and, not, and I'm not trying to say that just because, like, oh, I did it. But it was also like I can't tell you how many fans have came up to tell me like, man, that game was so crazy. Like I like little kids like, oh, I remember that. You know, like it was it was yeah. such a cool moment for Montreal football, and it's like, yeah. 
Because li- literally, like before, like like we won the we won the Grey Cup in like 2010, 2011, like two years in a row, and then after that, it was like Montreal football like just went down the drain, and like that yeah. play gave us like a little bit of hope. You know, it was like the first like time like we actually got to like cheer for something in such a long time. Yeah. Like. Yeah. So what, after you left, has there been, do you still have a relationship with the organization at all? Do you, you know, talk with anyone there? Do you have any form of relationship with the house? Um, so of course, like I have tons of connections there, like former players. Uh, yeah. You know, I still stay in touch with them because my girlfriend's actually Canadian from Montreal. Okay. So I go back and visit when I can, when, you know, there's not a pandemic going on. Yeah. And a 6 p.m. curfew over there. Fun yeah. fact, you were at one of my games when I was 16 or 17, I think, in St. Louis, yeah. because I believe your your girlfriend is has a cousin, Justin. Yeah, Justin, yep. He was on our team at the time. <laughs> I wasn't playing. I had a broken collarbone, but I remember you being there. I just thought it was so cool. Like, we, yeah, everybody yeah, knew that name. You know? Well, and, and that, that was another thing that – don't get me started, because I'm connected with all the Montreal Alouettes guys, and I loved Montreal. I mean, my girl – I lived there a year after I was done playing there. And I coached at Dorval. Like, I'd always yeah. help kids. I'd run football camps. And, like, I'd constantly contact the Alouettes. And they'd be like, no, no, we don't want to help you with anything. And I'm like, so, I don't know. You know, they uh, – management up there is uh, interesting, to say the least. <laughs> yeah, that kind of brings – I know Matt had this question for you. But um, if, you, if you had – or Matt, if you want to ask it. But if you had – It's like – I, you know, you said you're, you're, you're fixing your boat and stuff and like having some drinks. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to have a beer with this guy. But like, um, we're all like, we all like having alcohol and stuff. But like, we're wondering if like you and your teammates, like after games in Montreal, if you got a big win, like, was there any like, like go-to spot in Montreal, like, like after games you'd like to go to or like. Oh man. Uh, <laughs> I wish my girlfriend was here. She'd laugh at that question. Um, man. Well, uh. So Montreal was obviously a very fun city. Yeah. Uh, we would we we would get pretty rowdy after games. We would go one of our main places from like 13 and 2000 I guess wait 13 and 14 was apartment 200. Okay. Um, but we also we got really good within with the owner of apartment 200 and like club privé and all those Zach and so like we would just hop around all those places but you know, we uh, we would try to stay kind of low-key, but at the same time, we would probably not be very low-key. And we yeah. also uh, – we were very good at finding where the good uh, drink specials were. Because okay. we all are very big people that can drink a good amount. So, mm-hmm. you know, Montreal, you out drinking, you end up having like 15 drinks. That could be a pretty expensive bill there. Yeah, yeah. big time. And how many deep were you guys rolling? How many deep were you guys rolling to uh, after these games? Was it the full team? Obviously, I can't see Anthony Calvillo going out with you guys. But. <laughs> like 10 or 15 guys most okay. of the time. Um, we'd have some good times. It was good. I can't tell you all the places we go to. You know, y'all, y'all are still young out here, you know. <laughs> yeah. I-, I could probably guess. We can guess. We can guess. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we got it. Yeah. Oh, uh, lot, one last question from my end. I was just wondering, like um, – if there was maybe one guy uh, since when you got to Montreal was like, I don't know, like maybe your favorite teammate or some guy like you, like that meant the most to you on the team in Montreal when you were there. Well, you know, the thing that was, I, I would say in 2013, you know, when uh, we were there and we started one to seven and we came back and Crompton and I were playing and we were kind of rotating. Mm-hmm. It was Crompton starting and then I would rotate and do a lot of other stuff. Um, and we started winning a ton of games well, uh, you know, a lot of that was credit to our QB room, and our defense was absolutely playing insane. But, yeah. um, you know, our QB room, it was Crompton, Alex Brink, and me. And we just, like, we were such big fans of each other. We all loved each other. Like, mm-hmm. in 2013, you would find us after a game out at Apartment 200 getting toasted, like, seldom breaking a win because we just loved being around each other. Yeah. And we were those type of guys. Like, if you came up and you're like, hey, are you all the LOS? We're like, yeah, you want to drink? Have three of them. Let's go. <laughs> like, we were, just, we were just happy to be, you know, there around each other, be part of the Alouettes. And, you know, that's that's why we were so successful that year once everything started clicking. And so um, I would for sure say, uh, you know, uh, 
Jonathan Crompton, Alex Brink. Um, I also enjoyed in 14 when I played with Nick Lewis. He was an unbelievable character. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Ocho Cinco was really cool to be around. Oh, it's true. Um, yeah, I mean, there's a, there's a ton of good guys that were there. You know, all the LBJ, the, the center, that's Canadian. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, one of the greatest guys I've ever been around in my life. Um, and he's still coaching there, and I love him to death. Uh, Delorier. Um, I mean, I, just a ton of guys, just good guys over there. You know, I can't name them all, but we, we yeah. were all really close. And like I said, you'd probably catch a party in an apartment 200 a few times after the game, uh, which felt really weird, too, because we didn't go to the hit on girls because – I swear the girls were very, very young there. So we would like yeah. hide in the corner <laughs> by the pool table and be like, oh my God, we're old as hell over here. <laughs> yeah, I was definitely going to say like apartment 200 and a call privé. Those are like the, the young, like the younger spots. Yes. Yeah, so you know, no one ever told us that until mm -hmm. we got in there a few times and we were like, we're kind of older. Shit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, cheap drinks are cheap drinks. Yeah, yeah exactly. Exactly. So, but uh, so near the end of your career with the Owls, at least, you were really like the third down God, obviously NFL would be fourth down God, but the, uh, you know, the, the QB sneaks and all that. How, what was that like, that, that adjustment, like being like a, a third down specialist in that sense? Uh, it was for sure different. Um, yeah. You know, I wasn't necessarily used to it, but mm -hmm. um, I mean, I enjoyed it. And I, you know, I think what kind of made me better at it than most other guys in the league was I, I truly took passion in it. And I would literally like, watch film on how to attack different ways like the best place to attack we would we would actually go the reason why i love lbj is uh we would we'd go up and um you know i would walk up in french and if we were going uh um, damn i might even say it wrong we'd say french right or left so i think it was what it was like droit and gauche yeah yeah, yeah. 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 And so we would say that if we were going left or right and so, um, you know, him and me got in a really good uh, – got in a good rhythm with that. And, you know, like I said, I just took passion in freaking doing it. And there was a few times because I took so much passion in it that, you know, I ended up taking a few – like I broke one and, like, stumbled out of it and took it for, like, 40 yards on the field. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's awesome. That is awesome. So I enjoyed it. It was fun, but I did take a lot. One time I got hit so hard in that, my, my contacts got popped out. Boom. Jeez. Yeah. I was like, oh, oh okay. <laughs> Give me a play. Cool. Not fun being at the bottom of those scrums. Not at no, all. It's not, it's not. But that's when you get to talk the most, most trash. That's true. <laughs> yeah. You're like four play. Well, so the thing is, is I would rotate in and I would do that third and one, but then I'd also have like all the goal line packages. Mm -hmm. and then I'd have like second and three packages where they'd send me in and I'd do like options and stuff like that, which I freaking love to death. And, um, so, you know, I, I'd go in there for like my, like five plays other than my third and ones. And I would just talk so much trash because my second year I was, I was second in the league in touchdowns. So I was just running my mouth the whole time. Yeah. I was going to say, I think there was one point where you were like top three in rushing touchdowns. Which yeah. So it was really funny because, uh, our starting running back that year was Tyrell Sutton. Yeah. Great guy. And I'm loving to death. And I had more touchdowns than him. And he was <laughs> so mad because I take all his touchdowns. I think I finished the year with like 10 or 11 or something like that. I could That's be wrong. Crazy. Yeah. Crazy. But, uh, but we ran it a lot. So now, so if, if a CFL team called, I know you're coaching now, you're really into that, but if a CFL team called tomorrow and said, Tanner, we need you, would you, uh, would you strap it up or are you really done and you're focusing on the coaching and all that? Well, I mean, ah, just matters who the coaches, honestly, because right now, you know, it's funny to me. So after the CFL, I played, in the CFL, I went and played arena ball for a year. Mm -hmm. And then from that, I met just like a ton of people, a ton of coaches in that world. And I did really well, but I hated the game. Like absolutely just hated arena ball. Yeah. Um, so, but met some great coaches. So I actually, uh, so now when I, uh, so now I'll get calls from those guys and I'll go help them out for a week. I'll, I'll go, you know, one of the coaches down at Frisco, that's out there in Texas. They, I go and help them a lot. Um, I know it's just whenever people are like, Hey, would you be interested in being an emergency guy? You know, mm -hmm. I, I go out there and help them, but I always tell them on my, look, I'll throw the ball for you. I still got a great arm. I can still throw, I can still run, but I'm, I'm not taking a hit. No, yeah. there's no, you know, I'm over that. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so now, like, out of your career, um, just to switch angles a bit, I obviously I follow you on Twitter. Um, been seeing you coaching up a lot of young kids. Yeah. Uh, how's that been going? And and are you looking forward to more of that? Would you consider kind of coaching like high school or college? Or well, you, so yeah. it's it's kind of interesting. So when I was finished playing, I actually coached college for a year. Absolutely loved it. It was great. My uh, my quarterback actually ended up winning the Harlan Hill of Division Two, which is like the the Heisman Trophy for Division Two. Um, great quarterback. We ended up winning the national championship of Division Two. It was an absolute blast. Um, the only you know the thing was is that I realized that as much as I loved coaching college ball and coaching that it just took up so much time that. You know, I didn't get to enjoy my family. I didn't get to enjoy a lot of things. So um, it's a great experience and I absolutely loved it, but I kind of took a step back and that's why I do more like camps, private coaching, quarterback training, you know, just stuff like that because, you know, I get to uh, build an even better relationship with some of these kids and I get to do my own thing, you know, and because of that, I get opportunities. I'm also, you know, I, I do other businesses. I do a ton of other things. So um, mm-hmm. kind of, you know, it makes, it gives me more time to kind of enjoy life rather than just everything go to football. Cause I mean, for 26 years of my life, it was all football, football, football. So. Yeah. That's now awesome. I get to sit here and do podcasts and drink beer. At there four. you go. Cheers. <laughs> I'm going to hop in here and I'm going to throw it back to your, like your early career. Uh, we've heard like, we saw, we talked about like that third down QB sneaks, how that would happen a lot. That's obviously different from the American game. And we've heard a lot of Americans come to the CFL and say they didn't really know anything about it. So how yep. much did you know about the CFL before coming over? Yeah, so I, I got kind of lucky. Um, so my rookie year, uh, Josh Nicewander was uh, also with me and he, it was his second year. And he's actually, I've trained with him down here in Dallas during that time for years so I knew he was in the CFL and because of that I knew a lot about it um so I would talk to him about all the time and it was crazy when I made the team and everything and um you know he helped me out tremendously I can't you know even to this day we talk every once in a while he helped me he helped me through my career so much just to kind of learn all the things you know the different throws throwing the corner ball you know the third and one stuff you know the motion stuff he helped me so much with all that that you know, there was a point where I, I thanked him for my career because, you know, he truly helped me, you know, make the team and really grow as a quarterback. So, yeah, I was lucky. That's awesome. The problem is with a lot of Americans, too, they come up here and they, you know, they get up here and they think, oh, you know, this is CFL. I won't be here that long. And they don't really know much about the league or they don't know much about the, you know, the talent here and, they get up here and then they get cut in a week because they just, they think they could just show up and make the team when, you know, there's a lot of good talent out there in the CFL and a lot of good players, a lot of, and the thing is, is you got to realize, you know, people don't understand like, Oh, there's only nine teams on it, but there's more people in the state of California than there is in the country of Canada. And imagine a nine team league in California, they can barely hold three teams. So, you know, I try to explain that to people and how impressive it is that the CFL has, you know, survived this long with their, you know, how many people they have and how it's in different regions. And, you know, I think the CFL does a fantastic job mm-hmm. until lately. I'm not a fan of the yeah. uh, new guy. But... Yeah. So uh, I'm going to, I'm going to jump back to your Dallas Cowboys here. Okay. I'm, not a, fan here. I'm, a, I'm a Giants fan. I'm just going to throw that out there. Yeah, you're with the Giants and an Eagles fan. Cam's an Eagles fan. I'm going to ignore your question. So. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you said growing up, like, liking the Cowboys and everything. Yeah. And that call that you got, what was that excitement that maybe there was a chance that you were going to be a Dallas Cowboy? Yeah, so it was a really weird situation because, you know, that process is just freaking cutthroat as hell. Like, when I got cut by Indianapolis, um, I literally walked in the locker room like was in the process of getting naked and the guy just comes up. He's like, Hey man, we're releasing you. I got to take your playbook. And I'm like, can I, can I change first? And they're like, Nope, we need it right now. And I'm like, Jesus. Okay. Here it is, bud. So, like I got cut basically naked. It was very interesting. <laughs> um, uh, nothing like getting cut when your dick's out. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Um, uh, so 
Yeah, the Dallas thing was cool because since I'm a local guy, these teams have a thing called local day where they'll send in, like, if you're within, like, 50 miles or 100 miles of um, of the stadium or where they're – I don't know the technical rule, but um, mm-hmm. you basically can come in. They have, like, a big pro day for all these guys. So I was in that spot. So basically I got to come in. I got to throw for them. They gave me tons of gear. I got to go throw at the star and um, got to go hang out for a while. And then after the Colts thing, they talked to me and they were, um, they were, they said they were interested. They're just trying to see who else is getting cut. What's the whole process, seeing what I was doing. And um, because I knew one of the scouts really well also there for the Cowboys. So it was an interesting thing. And the whole situation was like super cool just because, you know, growing up, I was a Cowboy. I was a huge Romo fan. So being, you know, being there was absolutely amazing. So awesome. But good thing the Giants or the Eagles never called, or I would have just. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, more if they would have called, I would have been the first one on the plane. <laughs> Who are the Cowboys drafting? Do you have a Do you have like a dream pick? Do you still keep up with them, or? Yeah, I, I do a little bit. Um, I'm not that familiar with the draft right now because I haven't checked. Only the quarterbacks really, but I pray to God they pick a DB because they they're need gonna one. take Pat Sertan, I think. Yeah, I think that's that's the Alabama guy. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think that's exactly what you should right. take. Janie Speaking Janie. of Alabama and you keeping up with the quarterbacks, yeah. Mac Jones or Justin Fields? I need an answer. As a quarterback, Justin, who would you rather Justin have? Fields, one hundred percent. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We got a we got a Mac Jones fan uh, with the. Yeah, Alabama but I wouldn't. Fan. I I already said I wouldn't take him over Justin Fields. I just said I I don't think it's crazy that they're going to take him at three. If that's what they want, that's what they want. Like. Uh, I don't know. I just the one the one thing I can't do is. I can't I, – I just can't trust somebody that's been around literally just like – his receiving core is just way too good for him not to be successful. Yeah. And it's just, you know, I think that the thing that's tough is it's just – he'll be good, but he'll never be great. Like, I don't think – I think he can go out there and he can win you games, but if there was ever a point you're like, Mac Jones, we need you to go win us a game, I don't think he could. That's, yeah. that's always what I say, and I hate that it's, like, stereotype because, you know, you like, people say the same thing about Ohio State and, and what pro quarterback have they produced. But to me, it's – it's you're almost – Mac Jones had a top three O-line, one of the best running backs in the country, and you, you touched on the receiving core. Like, you almost kind of saw their ceiling, and granted, it's not the NFL, yeah. but you're, you're, like, how much better can he really get? He's surrounded by the best talent in the country for a whole yeah. season and more, and – Anyways, well, that's where I, I stand mean, on that. But you know, one of my things that I always thought was interesting is like when you break down film and you see a quarterback that has these like these huge numbers, and you go back and watch it, and you see like he throws a dig, you know, an eighteen yard dig, and you're like, wow, what a great throw! But then that player breaks a tackle and busts it out for a sixty yard touchdown, or you know, they run an angle where, you know, they're playing Ohio State and they throw it to uh, the Heisman winning guy. I can't think of him right this second. Devontae. Devontae, yeah. And he literally just runs by one of the best linebackers in college football, and you're like, like, great throw, but, like, that's not going to be open every single time. That guy's just a free – like, you know, it's just – I, you know, it's tough for me to see a guy and say he's going to be amazing in the NFL when he threw a slant and the guy busses it for 60 yards. Like, that's just not – then you got another guy, you know, I also am not the biggest fan of uh, uh, Jack Wilson. I don't think he's going to be as good as everyone thinks he is. Yeah. I really well, like obviously, him. Obviously, Trevor's the number one in this class. Who would your number two be in this class? I'd probably say Justin Fields. Yeah? Yeah, he had two very impressive pro days. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but uh, Jack Wilson, I don't think is bad. I'm just not the biggest fan of him. Mm-hmm. So Trevor Lawrence is obviously just unbelievable. Yeah. Maybe one of the greatest prospects of all time. Yeah, and I think he's been one of the greatest prospects of all time for the past like two years. Yeah, yeah which is crazy. He came out of high school and well, it was like Lawrence, if Trevor Lawrence left this year, he'd be the number one quarterback. Well, if he left this year, he'd be the number he's like eighteen and they're like, if he left this year and went straight into the league, he'd be Yeah. <laughs> the dude's good. Crazy. Yeah. Before uh, before we end the interview, I, like I figured I'd just switch gears and maybe uh, ask you like a little uh, a little jokes question here. But like, let's say you're going to a cookout and you gotta go to the you gotta go to the the beer store and get yourself a, a little twelve pack. What's your go to your go to twelve pack? 
Oh, man. So here in, in Texas, so I got to explain, though. In Texas right now, there's, like, this huge, like, dope, like, brewery contest going up where, like, all these little breweries are coming up with their dope beers and all these cool, like, hipster beers. And I'm, like, dead serious. This is going to sound really bad. But um, I literally am that guy. Like, if you put a board in front of me, like, all these different beers, I'll, I go down and see what the strongest one is. And I'm, like, perfect. 12%. I'm in that. <laughs> So, um, basically what it, the strongest beer that i could possibly get <laughs> it sounds so bad but that's why i loved freaking canada right i'd go and be like the molson dry beer that was absolutely disgusting i freaking loved it because it was yeah strong. yeah i know exactly yeah. what you're talking about they came in like 40s yeah and they're absolutely disgusting but like you drink like edge and you're like when did i get yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we they, probably, uh, you know what's funny is uh, I'll tell you all some stories. Um, <laughs> when when we were when we in, so we would go all like we wouldn't always go out. We like to like hang out and drink because we always we all lived in like some pretty dope apartments, right? So, um, so we would play like a PGA, you know, the video game. We play a PGA drinking game. And this, I'm talking about, it got so big that it'd be like 20 of the guys would come over and we'd play four person and it'd just become like this huge raging party. And basically, because you couldn't make it through 18 holes because you'd be so just trashed. Like, I can't tell you this again, it's going to sound really bad. So this is great. Um, like, I can't tell you how many times, like, I just passed out and woke up and was like, what the fuck is it? Like, it just, most of dries will get you if you mix them with, you know, whiskey and vodka. Shit. <laughs> so basically the game and i can't remember all the rules because we had a chart on it but basically like you'd have a team so two versus two have you ever played the game yeah yeah like it's golf so like it's it's a difficult game because you gotta like make sure it shoots straight and so like we would be dude by like if you shot it so the furthest drive whoever didn't get the first drive would have to take a take a sip of beer if you hit it in a bunker you would have to take a sip of beer but i'm talking about like we're not like like not sips like you're like and then we would take the lid of like vodka or whiskey whatever we have and if you hit it out of bounds you have to take two shots if you um if you were last on the green you had to take a shot and then if you lost the hole you'd have to take a shot man and if you uh man and then and then it came into like a betting thing because surprise surprise like when you get to that level everybody just is obsessed with betting so then you'd have money on it you had shots by the time you got to nine holes you were hitting it out of bounds every time so like it just became like this huge like you were just taking shot after shot after shot and then everyone just ended up just it was it was uh it was good times we nice. usually didn't remember those nights that's hilarious so uh what i'm hearing is next time you're in montreal we're playing a drinking game yeah, no, yeah, hundred percent. I am. Whenever I'm allowed to come up there, we're actually visiting, and um, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to go make a trip down Saint Laurent, relive some memories. Yes, sir. <laughs> That's it. That's it. I'm by a little. Uh, what was it called? Um, I can't remember the dam. The hidden strip club in the alley. Oh. Uh, Chelsea, what was the name of the strip club? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. What was it? Is it Shea Parade? Solid gold. No, it wasn't Shea Parade. Uh, that was the basic. That was like the touristy one. This right. one. Was, uh, there was. I know which one you're talking about. And it was super shady. Like there was. It was like. Uh, I want to say like Wendy. Yeah, it meant like beautiful woman, didn't it? It meant like. Uh, God, that's gonna drive me crazy. Yeah, that was. We lived there because they had two dollar shots in the back. It was uh, great. And a lot of the uh, strippers there lived in the same building I did. So, like, we <laughs> all got in with them, and no, it wasn't like that. It wasn't like that. We were <laughs> – some of them maybe were like – no, I'm joking. Um, it was uh, – and so, but in the back, the bartender, we, we, we ended up knowing her very well because we were just there, not looking at the women. We would just be in the back drinking at the bar, even though they had beautiful women, but – we weren't focused on that. We were focused on the cheap drinks mm -hmm. and that's, what's important. Absolutely. What now it's going to bother me is gosh, it's like in the alley. No one knows yeah, no, it's like secret. And I'm sure they like sell drugs out of it or Why something. Like, <laughs> no, 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 that's not it. I know. 
because they always had like two ginormous people out front. Like you wouldn't know it was a strip club unless you just like stumbled upon it. Yeah. Or knew somebody there. Yeah. Now going around the city, like you said, how many, like, was, was there a big perk to being an Alouette? Like, could you get into a lot of places, things like that? Like knowing that you were an Alouette? Well, I mean, the thing was, is like, this sounds really bad again, but we would, when we would go places, like there would always be like four or five of us, or even if there was Kama Sutra, there it is. That's okay. That's the name of the place. If y'all ever want to check it out, if it's still there. <laughs> um, it's horrible. You probably should never go. Y'all are all <laughs> too young to experience anything like that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, it was, uh, um, Hey, I'm just trying to create some controversy, right? Um, that's it. That's it. <laughs> uh shit what was i saying yeah no so most of the places we go we we'd go like places that like we always went to mm-hmm. so but normally like they always knew who we were we rarely had to wait in line because they knew like when we'd go we were gonna drop some some money because uh when we played like the older guys got paid weekly and like they had like cfo players when you're like a veteran you get paid well you know like a lot of the guys, you know, a lot of people for some unbelievable reason in Canada think that CFO players do not get paid well. And they actually do, especially for like an eight month job. Like I was mm-hmm. American and in my last two years there, I was making over a hundred thousand dollars. And like, you know, you talk to some kids there that are coming from the college, from college level and they swear CFO players only made like $15,000. And I'm like, well, go ahead and keep believing that and don't go play then. That's fine. Yeah. 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 No, I've heard it's low. I've never heard that low though. That's uh, no, yeah. So grand. the minimum, I think the minimum right now is $60,000 and that's base. That's not included. If you play, if you, you know, have, you have incentives where like, if you, uh, you know, if you become an all-star, that's an extra five grand. If you win a gray cup, that's my, you know, like you get paid. Mm-hmm. That's just like, that's just, that's just like basics. And that's mm-hmm. only eight months. So, yeah, I always found that interesting. So the CFL has eight eight month contract. So what would what would you do the other four months? Oh, I would come months? down and uh, um, train quarterbacks and just kind of do whatever I wanted to. Honestly, I would travel personally because I grew up like in Texas where you didn't travel because you everything you need is in Texas. So we never really traveled. So you know, once I made a little bit of money, I would go travel around a little bit. I train quarterbacks and I would you know enjoy the off time. So that's awesome. All yeah, right. it was fun. It was cool. But yeah, what I'm sorry, going back to your original question about like going to bars and stuff. Yeah. So we mm-hmm. never like people notice us because we go to the same places all, all the time. Mm-hmm. And it's hard in football because you wear a football helmet. So people, a lot of people don't know your face, mm-hmm. but there were, you know, it's, it's fun because you get a lot of fans and a lot of fun people, especially Montreal, I would say, you know, the fans love the team. So, like, it was super cool after games how they'd come down and, you know, want to shake your hand, want pictures with you, want to hug you, all that cool stuff. So, Sweet, sweet. So, Tanner, we were going to, you know, make the interview a part of uh, the podcast and then, you know, break off into our normal little segments, like our questions and stuff like that. But, um, you know, this has been really great. So, if you have an extra, you know, 15, 20 minutes, if you want to, you know, answer a few questions that we were all going to, you know, go around and answer, if you're down um can definitely do yeah, that just a few like I, I got number 10 all right sweet, awesome. sweet. all right so that uh, that uh, does it for our interview wait wait before yes. before we go on i see that uh that glass is empty i think you need another beer are you talking to me yeah yeah you're right well you know the thing is is i can take my time if i need to i can go get more beer because i don't got a curfew <laughs> uh, yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, I can I can we'll sit my beer. I can sit here. Like after we done, I'm gonna go leave. I'm gonna go get on my boat because I don't gotta be in it any time. <laughs> so must be nice. You, must be are nice. y'all allowed to have this uh podcast that late? I don't want to get you on. <laughs> <No. laughs> All right, so that does it for our interview with Tanner Marsh, but uh, he's been generous enough to join us for our question of the week. So let's hop into that. Um, so this week, our question of the week is about the hall of fame and it's about a guy who just retired a guy named Julian Edelman, three championships, Super Bowl MVP, one of the hardest working receivers you'll ever meet in your life. And the question of the week this week 
Is Julian Edelman a Hall of Famer? Let me go first, because I'm very passionate about this. Okay? First, let me start by saying I was a receiver, and there is not one receiver I think that I respected more than Julian Edelman. Seventh round pick. Guy who caught everything that went to him. Hardest working guy you'll ever see, okay? But the correct answer to this question is absolutely not. He is not a Hall of Famer, okay? Many players that deserve to be there instead of him stats-wise are not there. He has a Super Bowl MVP. He has three wings, rings, and that plays – that, that's a good argument, okay? But he also played with the best player of all time throwing him the ball each and every time, right? Okay. He never made a Pro Bowl, which automatically says you can't be in the Hall of Fame. The criteria for a Hall of Famer, in my opinion, is someone who is one of the best to ever do it. To me, that is not Julian Edelman. I was looking up like a bunch of arguments and stuff, and this guy named Alex Forlenza, he's like a journalist. Uh, I stumbled upon one of his articles, and I love this take. He said... People are arguing that because he made like that catch against Atlanta, like he's so clutch and deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. Like he's one of the most clutch players of all time. But like just because he made that play does not make, make him like Hall of Fame worthy. If that were the case, then guys like Jacoby Jones, David Tyree, and Antonio Holmes would be in the Hall of Fame making amazing catches in a Super Bowl. But that is not how it works. He was never even close to being the best receiver in the league for any year. It was not close. And I, I just like wrote down a little list of guys here of what of receivers when I think of a Hall of Fame receivers, okay? Some of these guys might not even make it. And you tell me if Julian Edelman is on the same planet as these receivers, okay? So when I think about a Hall of Fame receiver, I think about Larry Fitzgerald. I think about Terrell Owens. I think about Randy Moss. I think about Jerry Rice. I think about Calvin Johnson. Guys who haven't made it yet. Steve Smith. Andre Johnson, Reggie Wayne, DeAndre Hopkins, Antonio Brown, Julio Jones. You tell me if Julian Edelman is on the same planet as these guys. Not it's even not close. close. Not it's even not close. close. Not even so close. So if you even want to make an argument that he should be in the Hall of Fame, put these guys in first. All right. Well, I'm, I'm going to go just give off two quick stats, and then I'll let uh, our guest give his take here. I'm going to name two receivers who have more career receiving yards than Julian Edelman. Okay. Number one, Brendan Cooks has more receiving yards than Julian Edelman. Okay. Number two, Jeremy Macklin has more career receiving yards than Julian Edelman. Don't diss Jeremy Macklin. That's all. That's yeah, all I'm saying. Macklin is low key kind of nice though. He, he is. is. But is he a Hall of Famer? But was he a Hall of Famer? Oh, Absolutely. No. Not. Uh, I was. I was gonna. I was gonna say too. Like he, Jeremy Macklin. I think he had less catches, but he had more touchdowns and more uh, yards. Yeah. As well, so. Like again, again, I am a firm. I'm Eagles, firm so. on number. Sure, <laughs> we <forget> many games. <laughs> Listen, if there was a Hall of Fame for grit guys and guys who are hardworking, put him first ballot. But you're talking about all-time receivers. Julian Edelman is not on that list. Nope. Yeah, no, 100. percent There's no way he's a Hall of Fame receiver. Matt, I, you said you were passionate. I didn't think we were getting a rant like that. But uh, look, I don't have as much to add, but. I agree with you guys. Obviously, not a Hall of Famer. I respect the hell of his career, though. I think anyone would be lucky to, to win as many Super Bowls as he did. Um, and to top it off with a Super Bowl MVP, yeah, he's had a few, like, huge moments. One of the best postseason receivers um, we've ever seen, for sure. Um, but, yeah, with, with all that being said, love the guy. Great career. Uh, love what he stands for. His work ethic um, speaks for itself. But not a Hall of Fame guy. I, I think the Hall of Fame term gets thrown around too loosely. And I, honestly, it upsets me a little bit that, it, like, right as soon as he retired, it, is, it was, is Julian Edelman a Hall of Famer? Instead of, let's respect his career. And then, first of all, he never made a Pro Bowl, so he's excluded, um, unfortunately. But let's wait a couple of years to talk about this. We don't need to talk about it as soon. Let, let's let him enjoy retirement. Let's Let's talk about everything he did well instead of, trying to like find reasons to argue for or against just enjoy his career we're not going to see like i don't know i like I mean, typical a typical new england patriots fans like trying to hang on to something here because that was like their last successful player from their super bowl era, era. so 
Um, I agree completely. I don't think he even deserves to be in the same question. And, you know, like as much as I agree with y'all, he works his tail off, but like every team has five to 10 guys that have similar stories that work their asses off. They get to this opportunity and they ball out. Like that's the reason they're there. And um, I mean, there's just, there's no way he should even be mentioned in the same conversation as a hall of fame. I mean, if you go down the list and see all the different guys that have more receiving yards than him and like better stats than him, it's actually like borderline. You realize how he really didn't have that crazy of a career that, you know, no, he wasn't anything amazing. Like he wasn't taking over games. He wasn't, you know, changing the game. He ran a hell of a whip route, but like he wasn't just, you know, people weren't saying we got to bracket this guy. We're going to lose the game. And, you know, that's what a hall of fame guy is somebody that you got to change a whole game plan towards or, you know, scheme around. And that just, that just wasn't him. Yeah. Just, he, was, he was Brady's crutch, like in the playoffs. That that's really what. When I think of Julian Edelman, I think of all the big playoff catches. You know the game. And the worst part, and, and to truly think about it, is like he wasn't even the best slot receiver on his team. He had Gronk on the other side. So like, you know, like you know, Gronk is a Hall of Famer. So absolutely. He, like that's you know, I just I I don't I when I saw it on Twitter, I didn't even open it up because I was just blown away by that people actually thought that he deserved to be in a Hall of Fame because that's just. That's unbelievable. Yeah. Just to add a little stat in there, he's 156th all time in receiving yards. <laughs> that does not sound like a Hall of Fame resume. I don't know. Uh, yeah, y'all, y'all touched on this. So uh, my answer has been no from the start, but you literally took all the talking points, all of you. So there's nothing else to add. So the answer is no. Yeah. Like it just, it just goes back to it. Like think about me. My dad is a huge Patriots guy. He's like the typical obnoxious Belichick Tom Brady guy, you know? Like, he's like, oh, like, he, he was in my ear the entire time I was growing up saying Brady's the GOAT, all that stuff, you know? And, like, Julian Edelman was, like, one of the only guys that I actually liked. I hated Belichick. I hated Brady, you know? Like, not because not they weren't good. Not because I thought they weren't good. Just because, you know, they won everything, you know? But, like, yeah, yeah. but Edelman was cool and stuff and, like, you think about a Super Bowl MVP, like he does have a Super Bowl MVP, congrats. But the only reason why you won a Super Bowl MVP is because everyone else sucked in that Super Bowl. But, what, but let me ask you a question. How old are you? I'm 20. Why? What is, what is the problem with kids your age hating just like goats? Like, why don't you enjoy, enjoy seeing the best player in the world just be successful? Like, I, I never I agree. That. For I me, it's that. every sport but football. I can appreciate LeBron. I think it's because I'm the most passionate about football. I appreciate LeBron. I appreciate Crosby. I appreciate appreciate McDavid. But when it comes to football, I guess it's because I'm a Colts fan. And obviously Colts fans, we don't like Patriots. No one likes the Patriots. But when he left New England, I I, I started to gain respect. Not, Not gain respect for him. I always had respect for him. I started to like him a lot more. I think it's more the atmosphere in New England that I just hated. It's New England fans. It's all, like you said, it's. That's, They're just so obnoxious about everything. I just hated New England fans. Oh. No, I can – I mean, I can I can agree with that. New England yeah. fans are trash. But, but at the same time, like, you know, if you're a fan and passionate about football, you should still appreciate the fact that, like, when you watched the New England Patriots play Tom Brady and Bill Belichick, like, you were going to watch the best football you were going to watch that whole week. Mm-hmm. Like, that was the best football coaching-wise, scheme-wise. Like, you weren't – you weren't watching football that was just like, wow, they have some amazing players. You were watching just the best scheme-wise and just philosophy-wise, best football you were going to watch of your life right there. And that, to me, that's – like, I, I was never a Tom Brady fan. I loved his story. But, like, I also loved football. And the things that they would do, you're just like, gosh, that was that was genius. Like, they just beat mm-hmm. a team that has, you know, unbelievable players with guys that were – that aren't even going to be in the NFL next year. And that is what was so impressive with them. And yeah, their fans were annoying, but like, at least they weren't Dallas Cowboys fans that were like, Oh, we're going to win the Super Bowl every year. And they, you know, <laughs> they got, you know, they pay more money than anybody else for their players, but. You I don't think I'm right to speak on that being the Eagles fan, but I, I agree. I think we just like, it is what it is. I understand that the Patriots that. thing. I understand the LeBron thing as well. Uh, but look, like, who knows when the next LeBron is going to come, you know? I know no one, no one here hates LeBron. I don't know about you, Tanner, but all the boys love LeBron. 
Same thing with Brady. Like, we, we can hate him all we want, but when's the next Brady going to come around? Exactly. We never know. And the thing is, in the NFL and in that level, the thing we take for granted because of Tom Brady is consistency. Like, in the professional level, most guys only play for three years on average. And so, when you get somebody that consistently that long just not only plays, but plays at a high level, like, that shit is amazing. And all you youngins are just bashing on him because he's old. He runs a five six. <laughs> and he's still slanging past some four four motherfuckers. You know what I'm saying? Like, and and that's like that's what we should appreciate, not hate on the dude because you know he's goofy as hell and somehow is dating a supermodel. You know. So, like, the thing for me is like I never really like I I, I I never really hated his game. Like I've I've always respected his game. It's just the fact that he always won. It was so frustrating. Like. He, he was, was always, always the guy to, like, take you down. And it was just every single time the fans would be in your ear. Like, Patriots fans would just be in your ear saying, you're the GOAT, he's the GOAT. Like, the Pats are going to win. I'm just saying, like, fuck off. You know, like, <laughs> you know, like it's just – that's the that's the only reason. I feel like it was, like, the, like, like Dawson said, like, the atmosphere of, like, Patriots fans, too, was just so obnoxious. Yeah. It was just put in my brain as a young person to just hate Brady because my dad's a Raiders fan. Just, oh, well, that makes that makes was, a little bit of sense. Yeah, from the time I was young, you just you can't like Brady in my house. Yeah, a, and you got to remember, like, obviously, if you were born in Texas, you know, there's Cowboys fans, there's – and I don't even know if there's Houston Texans fans, but, like, in Canada, you, you kind of get to choose. It's not based on where you live. So all these kids growing up, they see, oh, Brady's winning, Brady's winning. So you just get, like, swarmed with these Patriots fans, and it just, it just drives me fucking crazy. It's not just, like – Twitter, it's not just Instagram, it's not just Facebook, like it's in your ear because you know they get to choose and they choose the Patriots because they're winning. Yeah. So, yeah, they, oh, oh man, you gotta, enjoy, you gotta enjoy the, the time you got because here in the next year or so, when he's done, there ain't gonna be nobody else like him. I mean, we we could always just you know root for Carson Wentz and hope he has you know a decent year once in his life again, <clears throat> which is probably not gonna ever happen again. All right. Sorry. <laughs> Jeez. All right. Well, anyways, back to the question of the week. <laughs> Julian Edelman, not no. a Hall of Famer. <laughs> okay. <laughs> out. He's out of there. <laughs> anyways, um, so that does it for the question of the week. Um, I say we move on to another segment. It's a little, a little game we like to play. It's a segment we like to call this or that. All right. So for this week's this or that. Um, we're doing end of career edition, which means basically we're going to compare two athletes and their stats and say at the end of the career, who's going to have the most. Okay. Simple enough. First one, NBA, who will have the most points scored all time? Is it going to be Kareem Abdul-Jabbar who ended his career with 38,387 points? Or will it be LeBron James? Who's currently third on that list at 35,283. I guess we'll raise up our answers. I've got LeBron. All right. So we've all got LeBron. To me, um, I mean, LeBron's a little bit hurt right now, but I, I could still see a good five years out of him, and that's, that's going to be easy to score 2,500 points. Um, I think he'll be the number one all time. And, uh, I mean, you guys already know this, but to me, he's, uh, he's the best player of all time, and, and that's, uh, that's, my, uh, that's my little rant. Yeah, I, I can see LeBron going over 40,000. Um, obviously he's going to want to play with Bronny. So I, I, again, I can see him, like Matt said, hanging around another three, four or five years and he can easily, easily hit those numbers in that time. So uh, I'm not stressing for the goat. I think he's got it. I only said LeBron cause I was scared to get called out if I didn't, uh, all jokes aside. Yeah. Like you said, I, I think he does want to play with his son. Obviously that would be, um, something special to see. So I do, I do agree though. He'll, he'll stick around a bit and. Like you guys said, he's really not far away. Um, I think Jordan put up 3K in one year once, so or maybe more than once. So definitely attainable. I could see him doing it for sure. Yeah, like Dawson said, I think he's gonna hit 40. So I think he's gonna blow him out of the water. Uh, like Matt said, I hope we have at least five years left. I don't know if he'll actually play five years, but uh, I don't think it's gonna be close at the end of LeBron's career. Yeah, you have anything to add? It's 
It's a given. I don't know if y'all have looked into any of his stuff about his diet mm -hmm. and like uh, what he does, but he for sure has got tons of time. Like his diet is crazy. Like he doesn't eat anything fried during the season. He only drinks like red wine. Um, he his diet is nuts. So like I I have no no doubt that he'll be which goes a long way when you're playing at that high level. So I think, I think he'll easily be able to beat that. And he still has, you know, the thing that's nice about him, the way he's played out his career and like how he's treated himself and invested so much time in his body. Like he'll be that type of person. That'll be like, he'll get the quit on his terms rather than the other way around. So, yeah. Yeah. Like I, I think, I feel like, I mean, we have four of these comparisons, but like pretty much we're just, if you're going to bet on the, on the guy who's currently playing, you're just, you're banking on longevity. Right. And, like I'm just taking like two guys, for example, that have like come out and said it like Russell Wilson and LeBron James both said they spend over a million dollars on their body a year. Like, which is crucial, yeah, which is actually, you know, you'd be surprised how many people don't do that. Like mm -hmm. crap. I'd spend money on like training in my body, but then I'd go drink a beer. Right. So like, yeah, you know, you'd, you'd be surprised how many people just don't focus absolutely everything on their body because like our whole lives, we, we never been told that, you know, just, just a stretch. Mm hmm yeah so tanner i don't know if you're if you're a hockey guy but we have one of these one 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 hockey question and that's um who will at the end of their career who will have the most goals scored will it be gretzky currently has who ended his career with 894 or alex ovechkin who currently has 730 this one uh it was tough but uh i i went with what i hope for okay because I, I went with ovechkin I can't. I can't see what. What did you? Would you put I Shane? Shane eight. I see. Oh, yeah, Shane has eight. Okay. So. so, myself and Shane took Ovechkin. Cam Dawson took. I'm Gretzky, baby. All right. Yes, yeah. Sir. So, um, no, once again, I'm I'm banking on longevity, but I'm hoping for it. You know, because there a limit. Once you lose so many teeth in hockey, you gotta retire. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> but uh, you know, I'm, I mean, I grew up watching Ovechkin. He's the greatest goal scorer I've ever seen play. And uh, listen. I, I Gretzky has all the all the freaking like records. I just want to see one get broken, and I think if there's anyone that's gonna get broken, it's gonna be this one. So yeah, I mean, it, it's definitely of his records. It's the one that has the best chance of being broken. But I mean, what 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 is it like? One hundred and seventy goals almost. Uh, that, that, it's about one hundred and sixty left. Yeah, hundred. Yeah, that, that that that's no that's no small task. Even if o, you know Ov scores is 35, 40, 50 goals a year, like it'll be tough. I can see it being broken, but my heart hopes that, you know, it kind of stays with Wayne because he is the great one. So. Yeah, I, I agree. I would love to see Ovechkin do it just because, I mean, we grew up watching him play and like, I mean, he's, he's one of the, him and Crosby, it's been one and two their whole career, uh, our whole lifetime of watching hockey. But that being said, 164 goals, like the way it's going now too, the shortened season and, and, I don't know. I would love to see him do it. I don't think it's going to happen. And I, after that, who knows? Some 14-year-old kid that's going to come along and break Gretzky's yeah. record eventually. He's not even in the NHL right now. I, I honestly think he's going to do it. I think he, he's 35, turns 36 in July, I think, or September. Uh, his, and I think he still has a lot of hockey left. And this guy scores 50 goals a year like it's, like it's nothing. Like he's shooting in an empty net. Like – uh, I also want him to do it because as much as, you know, Gretzky's the great one, Ovechkin's the best goal scorer of all time. It's not close. And I want people to stop having that argument that just because Gretzky scored more goals, he's not a better goal scorer than Alex Ovechkin is. Mm. Tell him how you really feel then. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't know enough about hockey to uh, – um, you know, really argue that, but I, you know, I'm a big, I'm a, you know, I'm an OG type of guy. Baby. So I'm a Gretzky guy. I'm gonna, I'm a, I'm a rock with, with Gretzky. So on, there's, there wasn't really a bad pick on this one. Can't go wrong. Yeah. yeah. Can't go all wrong. right. So we got two more left. These ones are NFL related. Uh, in terms of all time rushing yards, Emmett Smith is number one with 18,355. Mm. Will mm. Derek Henry pass that with currently has, 5,860 rushing yards. I'm sorry, Tanner, but I am a massive Alabama football fan. And 
I have Derrick Henry. <laughs> there it is. All right, so yeah, I'm riding with Tanner. I'm riding with Tanner here because I know his answer. What did uh, what did you what did you take, Shane? Or I didn't see yours. Sh- Shane said uh, Henry too. Okay. So I had Henry. So did Shane, Cam, Tanner, and I'm guessing Tanner and Dawson had Emmett Smith. Um, listen, Derrick Henry. I've never seen a running back like him. This guy is a defensive end playing running back who runs a four five and just absolutely bullies everyone. It's ridiculous. It was the same thing in college. I said, this guy has a chance. This guy has a chance to become the best running back of all time. He's shown it the last two years. He's 100% been the best running back. I don't know how you're supposed to stop him. I mean, you could game plan all you want, but this guy put up that mean he ran for 2,000 yards this year. I, I, I could see him doing it two, three more times in his career. Mm-hmm. That's like, it's, it, it's, it's amazing. I'm just so happy that, I mean, Alabama is RBU at this point, but uh, I won't get into that. But Derrick Henry is definitely the best one to come out of Alabama in a while. That's for sure. Yeah, I mean, my main concern is just the longevity of running backs in today's NFL. Obviously, there's a lot of replaceable running backs. I'm not saying Derrick Henry is replaceable by any means. But I just feel like there has been so many amazing running backs since Emmett Smith that haven't touched that record. I don't necessarily see why Derrick Henry is different, despite how unique of a running back he is. I think I, – I, Again, and the way the game is going now, I think we're seeing a lot of, you know, it's it's a lot of passing. It's a lot of, you know, it, it's a very diversified game. So I don't know. Obviously, we rushed for two hundred uh, for two thousand. I don't know how many times he's actually going to do that in his career. But you know, the game is evolving so quickly that I'm not sure. And again, I could be completely wrong. But how important is the running back going to be in three years, or you know, things from that? And it's a big enough number, and he's far enough away that. You know, it's cause for concern for me and leading me to pick Emmett. I don't – it's going to be tight, I think. But here's my – as long as Ryan Tannehill is the quarterback in Tennessee, Derrick Henry is going to be close to 2,000 yards. Like, uh, barring an injury, like, let's not – Ryan Tannehill is not Tom Brady. He's not Patrick Mahomes. He's not He's not throwing for 300-plus every week. They lean heavily on Derrick Henry, and as long as, as he's their number one back and they keep that – that whole line intact and the same scheme. I mean, it's hard to see it go. It's hard to see. Yeah. Like that's another thing that I like, I agree with, like they're building that offense around Derrick Henry. They're not building it around Ryan Tannehill. Like, let's be honest, you know, like. That being said though, I, I, we'll see. I, I, there are injuries. Uh, every guy, almost every guy in the NFL gets one eventually. And anyways, we'll see, we'll see how it goes. I, I do think he can be, he can beat it though. Like like Cam said, it's going to be close. And the difference for me was why I gave it to Henry was now he has 17 games a year. So he has an extra game every year that he's going to play true. that can push him over 2,000. Like, I think he could rush for 2,000 every year if, he, if they keep ru- running the same offense that they have. Like he did it in 16 games. So I think he has a chance to beat the actual rushing record in a season with these 17 games. So if he can rush for, let's say, 18,000 every year, he, he's going to be very close. So I think that, that extra game gives him the, the higher higher up for me. Mm-hmm. 1,800, not 18,000. Yeah, 1,800, sorry. If he runs for 18,000 yards every season, uh, there's a problem in the NFL. <laughs> and he probably needs to get tested for steroids. <laughs> Yeah, no, I'm going to go with my boy, Emma Smith. I think he's going to hold off because, uh, one, I'm, I'm obviously, you know, how about them Cowboys, baby? And Emma Smith, I'm telling you, you, you youngins don't fully understand how amazing Emma Smith was. And I'm also, you know, me being – I'm also a bigger fan of people that are just, like, absolutely ridiculous, just looking average but being ridiculous – and compared to someone that's just absolutely a monster who should be rushing for freaking 2,000 yards a game because he's mm-hmm. a giant. Like, yeah, he should be running that. But Emma Smith, I'm telling you, like, he was the most impressive. He was out there on AstroTurf juking people, running around in Nikes, Jordans, out there juking people and running for all that. And, you know, he's just – I don't want him to break the record. And I don't think he will because I also think that eventually they're going to have to start rotating in um, their quicker guys more often because 
one, I think he will take a pounding, but eventually like to be successful, you have to rotate, you rotate in that other guy a little bit to throw the ball more. And mm-hmm. I, I think Tannehill's actually a really good quarterback. I think he's extremely underrated. Um, but I also think Derrick Henry is a monster. I just don't want him breaking that record. Yeah. So I, I didn't, I didn't want to take anything away from Tannehill. I'm just like, yeah, that offense seems a little bit more geared toward Henry, right? Like as it stands, no, right? as it should be, as it should be. Yeah, absolutely. But they had a amazing offense. I think their offense was, you know, people forgot how good the receivers in Tannehill was. Yeah, absolutely. Derrick Henry, right? Mm-hmm. Like I thought, if they had maybe, if they had a little, you know, better scheme, I think they would have been a little better. Um, but I don't know. You know, there's times Derrick Henry, like, yeah, when he's running full speed at you and he gives you that stiff arm, you're like, dear Jesus, this guy is God. But there's times where also he just kind of like falls on the pile. Yeah. But I love me some Derrick Henry, but you can't tell me he runs like he's 6'4", 240 every damn time. Like, yeah. uh, there's always – they run that zone read like it's going out of style, and there's times where he just kind of like eh, – and just falls down. So, I mean – as much as I am a fan of him, I'm also an Emma Smith fan. And, you know, Emma Smith was a dog. Now, all y'all need to get finished this and go watch some Emma Smith highlights. <laughs> get back on here and give me that, you know, give me that. Now, just, just quickly, before we jump to the next question, just out of curiosity, do you have a favorite college football team? I grew up being a University of Texas fan. But, uh, um, surprise, surprise, but – that uh, I mean, right now, not really. I, I know okay. so many guys that I, I have a quarterback that's now a coach at University of Alabama. So like, I I pay attention close to them, but like, I just have guys everywhere. So mm-hmm. that's awesome. Cam, you want to take the floor that? University of Texas fan, bro. Cam, you want to speak on that? Nah, a little bit of Oklahoma fan. A little bit goes back to it's a weird story though. But Trevor Knight, that was a guy that made me become an Oklahoma fan. Before Baker Mayfield, before Kyler. For night, why? Uh, I was in Bantam. I was fourteen at the time, and my coach, or fifteen, I don't know. I was I was pretty young, and my coach was just like, I, I have this college football like game pass, and I just watch every college game I could I could find on TV. Mm-hmm. Like, All right, it's pretty random, you know. It's Saturday morning practice, and he tells me he's like, go home and and watch Oklahoma play. I don't. I don't even remember. It might have been Texas, for all I know. <laughs> it might have been the Red River game, but no. And he was like, "You just you remind me of Trevor Knight. You know, watch him play. Like watch the things he does and whatever." So I did, and I don't know. He had a, he ended up having a crazy game, and I was like, "All right, I'm gonna start watching this guy." And yeah, played pretty well. I think they beat Alabama that year. Didn't Colorado. didn't he transfer out? Yeah, he went to A and M after. Yeah, yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. Yeah, but if you want to know how much of a Oklahoma fan Cam is, I mean, if Baker Mayfield walked in and asked him for a kiss, he'd probably say yeah. That's how much he likes uh, Oklahoma and Baker. That, I mean, I don't think that would ever happen, but. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I have met Baker Mayfield a few times, and it's, he's a character. Yeah, for sure. A video of him shotgunning is fantastic. Yeah, he's, he's an interesting cat. <laughs> yeah, all right. Let's move on to the last one. This is – Talking about all-time passing yards, okay? So, at the end of their career, who's going to have the most passing yards? Are we talking Tom Brady, currently has 79,204, or Patrick Mahomes, who has 14,152? The only reason why I didn't put Breeze is because I'm just assuming that Brady passes him this year. Uh, I mean, Breeze is the first one we hit 80K. But, uh, I mean, Brady's probably not even going to be done after this year when you think about it. So, Yeah. Who's gonna be? Who's gonna end up their career with the most? I've got Brady. So does Dawson. Brady uh, Mahomes, right? Yeah, Brady Mahomes. Cam and uh, Cam and Shane have Mahomes. What do you got, Tanner? I'm going Mahomes. Yeah. The only reason why I have Brady is because I don't think Patrick Mahomes is gonna play till he's 46, which I'm guessing Tom Brady is gonna play to. Tom Brady is still. I mean, he's got an unbelievable offense right now. Probably the best offense he's one of the best offenses and receiving cores he's ever had. And yeah. that's just going to eat up passing yards. So uh, we'll see, but you know, listen, if there's anyone who's got a chance uh, at uh, becoming the goat, I think uh, Patrick Mahomes has got something special going on in Kansas city over there. So uh, we'll definitely see. Yeah. For me, I think, you know, with the evolution of 
social media and, you know, doing all these other things. Like obviously Pat Mahomes is a co-owner of the Royals. Like Matt said, I think not that he's going to get tired of football, but I think he's going to try and appreciate his life after football a lot more than a lot of these, you know, these older generation guys. So I could see him, you know, retiring at 35, 36, 37, 38, and not making it to, you know, his forties and playing football, not because he can't still do it just because he wants to enjoy life after football. Um, so I, th- I think his career will be shorter than Brady's and obviously that'll, you know, affect his career passing yards. So that's why I, I had Brady. To me, the Chiefs, like, okay, Brady had a couple of years where the Pats, like, were doing the same thing that the Chiefs are doing right now is just throwing the ball every single play. But the Chiefs literally do that. I mean, other than Clyde, and they just got him last year, Mahomes is throwing for 400 yards a game, like, down near. So, I don't know. I, there's just no signs of him slowing down, obviously, barring a crazy injury. But even Brady missed it almost a whole year. So, I don't know. I really – the Chiefs do have something special going on. It doesn't look like it's slowing down. I think Mahomes might blow them out of the water. Yeah, like Cam said, they're not slowing down that passing offense. Andy Reid knows what he has in, in that offense, and he's going to always trust Mahomes with the ball. And once again, 17 games a year. How long is Brady going to play with that 17th game? What, two years max, maybe three? I don't think he's actually going to play until he's like 50, like he wants to or whatever. Maybe two or three years max, and Mahomes has another 15 years. Yeah, I I like, uh, you know, I I say Mahomes because I think Mahomes is going to, you know, um, as long as he has Andy Reid, that guy is going to be by far the most successful quarterback. And I think Andy Reid's similar. Andy Reid, this is his, you know, last spot. He's content here in Kansas City. And – I just – I don't see them leaving each other anytime soon. Um, well, obviously, Mahomes isn't leaving. But, um, you know, I think I think it boils down to – I like what Dawson said about, you know, saying that he might retire sooner than later just because of, you know, how he's invested his money and he signed literally one of the biggest contracts you possibly can in the NFL. Um, you know, but saying that, like, so say we have him for nine more years with Andy Reid. I mean, I think in nine years he can he could get pretty dang close. So, uh, in, am I doing math wrong there? Let me pull out my fingers here. <laughs> yeah, I think he could get pretty close. <laughs> and again, there's 17 uh, games now. So, um, yeah, I mean, Mahomes and and I and I'm rooting for him. Like I want him to do that. And he's a Texas quarterback, so he probably is gonna break it. Mm. So, 100 percent. I think, honestly, I think uh, if, if not Aaron Rodgers, I think Patrick Mahomes is probably the most talented quarterback I've ever seen, especially in terms of arm talents. Kind of ridiculous the throws he makes. But, um, yeah, I mean, I love watching him play. I don't think there's a player in the NFL I like watching more right now throw the ball than freaking Patrick Mahomes. Unbelievable. Yeah, he's, he's crazy. I mean, Aaron Rodgers is probably the only person I would say that does have a better arm in him and that is more impressive to watch just because – he doesn't have a Tyree kill out there. He doesn't have, you know, this amazing offense. And he, what, what Aaron Rodgers does, we will also never, ever see again at the quarterback position. It's crazy. He's unbelievable. He's the OG. And that burns my heart to say because I'm a Cowboys fan. It's fucking bullshit, but he's a baller. Yeah. As long as he doesn't play on the Eagles or Giants, I'm like, hey, you know what? Good for him, dude. You're all right with me. As long as we don't got no Daniel Jones or uh, Carson Wentz or, you know, what's the new uh, Alabama quarterback over there? Jalen Sanders. Yeah, as long as we don't have those uh, we're cruising and bruising. So, as long as we got the best quarterback, you know, in the NFC, we're good, you know? Which you do. Exactly, we do. He's going to sleep on my boy Danny Dimes. Oh, no, he's fucking shit. Yeah, no, he's being slept on 100%. Future MVP? No. I don't think so. Maybe in a year when, like, the, you know, 31 of the 32 quarterbacks get injured or something crazy. (laughs) (laughs) You can't say that after he just, like, trips over himself on his way. (laughs) That was bad. I didn't think he was a good guy. He fumbles more balls than he does complete passes. Like, it's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We didn't even like control that. Like he just, 
he he does two good throws and then like does a pl- throw you're like what in the fuck I was just saying how good you were gonna be and then you do that I know it's 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 frustrating but I I still have faith yeah I, I honestly don't think he's I mean you could at least you have him instead of what the Eagles have so could be worse or the it, Washington Redskins or I'm sorry sorry the Washington <laughs> <laughs> you're good we've all done it. <laughs> oh, sh- <laughs> Hey, quickly, hey, if, uh, if you were to w- rename the Washington football franchise, what would you want their name to be? I don't know. I was, I was looking at the list. I, the, the Washington Presidents was kind of cool. I don't even know why that is cool, but, you know, that's, that's kind of dope. What about the Washington Fire Ants? The Washington Fire Ants. I could, I could care less because I, I <laughs> suck, but, you know, they could be called the Washington, you know, dipshits. If they were. <laughs> Facts. <laughs> Oh, you know, whatever they wanted to because they're going to be bad for a long time so all right so that does it for this or that let's go on to our last segment we'll go we'll do one more segment here and it's everybody's favorite segment and it's a little segment we like to call top five All right, so for this week's top five, we decided to do favorite music artists. Okay, so I'll start. I'm going to give an honorable mention to Lil Uzi Vert and the Migos. I just, Lil, Stop listen, it. listen, I like Stop Lil Uzi Vert. Your old freaking Canadian. <laughs> oh my God. What do you expect? What do you expect? You, you expect? Is, he said honorable mention to Lil Uzi. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm right now. I don't know why you're flaming me. This oh, guy's nasty. Oh. Anyways, number five. <laughs> Little baby, okay. Little baby, unbelievable rapper. Probably top three. I don't. Tanner, I think you just like country music because in the rap game, Little Baby is probably like number three right now, in the world. Yeah, are we? I thought you said all time. Oh, we yeah, said but, you could do whatever you want. Uh, whatever I'm you want. Years old. You think I got like Blake Shelton? You think that's my guy? I was like, <laughs> no, you, you, know? you just assume I like country because I'm from Texas, and you're coming yeah. at me with wah wah wah. <laughs> oh, these are the types of guys I, I grew up with anyways oh. anyway you guys better not be changing your list because i know that guy's on your list too <laughs> no. i'm gonna no, give no. all of y'all a hard time you all right all right number four roddy rich started like three years ago like started becoming popular th- like three years ago i really like his flow number three drake probably the greatest he's gonna end up being the greatest artist of all time that definitely on the billboards it's not even close number two a guy who came up uh just a couple of years ago don Tolliver. i don't know if you uh tanner i don't know if you know him but i think you should listen to him i think you'd like him i'm just gonna be a little don Tolliver. i mean yeah. i'm just I'm, I'm just you know i'm just listening now at this point so yeah. i'm just chilling <laughs> i'm not having a shit bro he's got a he's got a, he's got a voice that'll soothe you anyways number one not necessarily an art yeah i guess he's an artist but more like a dj calvin harris Ever since I grew up, he's been releasing. At any song he releases, it ends up being number one. I've always liked his songs. Calvin Harris, you're my favorite artist of all time. Congratulations. All right. I took this one a bit differently, and I'm going to speed through it because Tanner scares me, and I don't want him to yell at me. Um, so this is my favorite artist right now. Okay, number five, we got Lil Dirk. Number four, we got my man Polo G. Number three, Pop Smoke, R.I.P. Number two. Oh, fuck. <laughs> man. Like, do y'all really sit at home and listen to this music? Absolutely. Absolutely. Man. Absolutely. But, no, this is more my driving music. Driving music, I like to sing along. I like to get crazy. Number two, A Boogie, my favorite. And number one, Drake, my man. Honorable mention to Group Project, who made our intro song. Shout out to you guys. All right. Huge shout out. You know, I'll give a little. This is the type of shit you can listen to right here. (laughs) Yeah. That is what you be listening to, huh? Absolutely. Tell me that's it gets not fire. me fucking me hyped, let me tell you. Don't tell me that's not fire. I'll give an honorable mention to yeah, Abe. That is a catchy tune. Okay, Tanner, you, you're going to like Cam's list. I, I, I can almost guarantee it. Okay. Part of it. Y'all don't even know what type of music I like. Y'all just assume. Yeah, no. I, you know what? I won't say anything. I'll just give I'm assuming list. country. I'll give my <laughs> list. It's a little bit of a mix, mix and match, you know? I, I listen to a, lot, a little bit of variety, but anyways... Um, number five, look, I'll give an honorable mention to A Boogie, Lil TJ. You know, I like those guys. They didn't crack the list, though. 
At number five, country artist. I kind of flip flopped it actually. I kind of like this list. All right, at number five, I have Thomas Rhett, little country guy, gets the heart going, nice campfire songs. It's a heart. Whatever, girl. just to chill, you know, like a little bit, little bit of a softy, but. I like the music. I saw him live hey, in Montreal. Hey, don't hey, don't be shy out here, man. That's just some good music right there now, boy. That's <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're going to go assuming you like you, country. Nah, but, but no, I like all types of music. The music, I just like, I, I'll, I'll, I'll explain when it's my all time. Right, yeah, all okay, right. but just like, it, just really, really quickly, like, we lo- like Travis Scott, like all the big names, Future, you know, you go see them live, they're barely singing, and when they do, you want to rip oh, your ears off. Like I went to, I've been to see a lot of country, uh, country uh, concerts, and like they, they all sound exactly what they sound like, or ninety percent of them sound exactly what they sound like on on the track. So, at five, I have Thomas Rhett. At four, I went with Right Now as well. Rod Wave, the vocals go crazy. Great range. That that stuff like puts you to sleep. It's a vibe when you drive. I love it. Um, at number three, a guy who's been up and down, and I'm kind of scared to say this for the for the backlash that I might get, but Morgan Whalen or Wallen, however you pronounce his name. Uh, Banger. Great yeah. album. Yeah, Fucking absolutely banger. great album. Man. Yeah, no, he's an idiot, but you can't deny his music's not a banger. Yeah, exactly. And he's supposed to be in Montreal this summer, too. I mean, hopefully that... that well, yeah, well nobody's going to go see him because they all want to be gangsters and listen to Polo G, so... <laughs> I'll That's be there. Canadian youth right there to a T. Y'all want to be gangsters. <laughs> I definitely don't want to be a gangster. Never even seen a gun in your life and want to be gangsters. <laughs> I d- definitely don't want to be a gangster. <laughs> I'll never forget, funny story. I'll never forget when I came up there and, um, you know, living in Dallas and living in all these big cities and, like, seeing a bad area or going to the hood or, like, being around gunshots and stuff and, like, going to Canada and people being like, hey, don't go down there. That's, that's the hood. That's a bad area. I was like, what do you mean it's a bad area? Well, it's just, you don't go on that side of town. And like, you walk down that side of town and there's absolutely no issue or anything. Like, it's just like the lower income area part of town. <laughs> More homeless yeah. people over there. Like, it's like one beat up car with a broken window. You know, it was like a beat up car and a homeless guy offering hand jobs for 10 bucks. <laughs> like, don't go down there. It's dangerous. It gets you if you don't watch out. <laughs> That's crazy to me. Like, what is someone going to do, rob you with a kitchen knife? Like, oh, no, don't butter me up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I guess I'll go back to the list. So this is not going to be a bad look. At, uh, this is not going to be a good look after what Tanner just said. But hey. at number two, I have Meek Mill. Look, hey, look. I'll rock with some Meek Mill. I like Meek Mill. Meek Mill gets you hype. Exactly. Y'all are, too young I was... Y'all are too young to even know good Meek Mill music, though. No, nah, I, I go all the way back to Dream Chase as well. And, like, uh, Meek no, I'm talking always... about the other two kids over here. Oh, man. No, Polo G is so much harder. No, that's what I'm saying. Like, nah, it first is. Of all, I'm, the old, like, I'm the oldest one here. Well, what are you, 24? 22. Exactly. Get out of here. <laughs> Look, I think I was one of the only people that I know anyways that stood by him through that Drake beef. Everyone was like, oh, you know, Drake murdered him in the, on the beat for sure, but. I still stuck with Meek. Like I was ready to drop Drake completely. No, like, see, completely. See, the thing is, is Meek. Meek was uh, he's a different type of rapper, dude. You, he's, he he doesn't rap where people like like everybody like Drake. Every like your girlfriend likes Drake. Like your girlfriend doesn't like Meek Mill. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Your mom won't listen to a Meek Mill song. You're right. But your mom and- will listen to a Drake song. That's why Drake's so good because he has that side too. He, he's no uh... because all of Canada is so creepy look so creepy obsessed with drake and justin bieber it's the craziest thing i've ever seen in my life Fair enough. and number one undisputed easiest easiest number one i've ever had i think luke combs like every song he puts out hey. just just slaps like hey, i've seen him live he's a banger I'm, I'm waiting to see him live now obviously it's a little hard but <laughs> you guys just assume that i'm a country boy <laughs> Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Wait till my list, though. Of course, but I like all music. I know Zach. I listen to Polo G music. I listen to all the rappers y'all said music. I listen to every single music. So why are you roasting Dawson for liking Polo G? <laughs> because I don't like him. I think it's unbelievable <laughs> that y'all like guys that like they come out with two bangers and then the rest of the songs are like <laughs> strippers, money, bitches, ho, <laughs> banger, banger, pop, 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 money, 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 money. 
I'm a butter knife you. <laughs> like that's what y'all, that's what y'all be banging to. Like what? I know it's dropping like, bars. Man, like that's how do you? How is that like? You be in your car like yeah, yeah. I don't know what they're saying, but listen to this music. Yeah, you're looking around like trying to be you're like yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know what? But seriously, and I'll let you, I'll let you answer in a second, my man. Let me ask y'all a question though. Have y'all ever two step to a country song though? Like actually learn how to two step. I tried. If I you like, actually learned how to two-step and did it and, like, did it right, I'm telling y'all, y'all would love country music ten times more. Y'all can do all that twerking stuff, all that booty duping and stuff. I did that, and it was great, and I love it. But two-stepping, man, if you want to take a girl home, learn you how to two-step. Right. How do you think I got me a Montreal girl right there? I <laughs> took her, taught her how to two-step. Next thing you know, she moved down to Texas. All right, all right. <laughs> all right but I can't argue with that. Exactly. All right, uh, so I'm a little scared. I to hope go. she didn't hear that. She's going to murder me. <laughs> I'm a little scared to go. So, Tanner, if you want to go first, that would be great. Oh, no, no, no. My shit going to get all kind of riled up. So, you can go ahead and go, bud. I'll, I'll, oh, give you like, I'll give you like a break on like two artists. Uh, okay, okay. So, at number five, we got little TJ. I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm scared to talk about what I want to talk about. Mm. <laughs> I'm going to just move on. Number four, little baby. Shout out to Matt. Little baby wait, might wait, be the that, best. That, that, that's, that's your two. From here on out, he can rip you for all your artists. Number three, we have A Boogie. That is my guy. I listen to every song. I have never had a complaint about an A Boogie song, except for right now when Tanner goes off. Okay, so I'm going <laughs> to let you have A Boogie. I rock with A Boogie more than Lil Baby. Lil Baby, I do not get how people listen to Lil Baby. Like, everyone says how good his flows there are, and I agree. But, oh, my, like, the dude, like, how many times can y'all hear someone rap about getting money and strippers and hoes and clapping cheeks? And, like, how many times can y'all listen to someone just, like, rap and change the words in a song and sound the exact same? That's, that's so on dang. Like, I can rap about this keyboard ten times over different beats and using different wor words, and, like, that's a little baby to me. All right, all right. I'm not saying it's bad. Like, it's it. banging music. You know, like that dope line, like, wah, 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 my oh, baby, he's, he's got dope in it. <laughs> Good for him, bud. But, like, I just can't – I can only listen to, like, two songs at a time. So, continue. Sorry. All right, number two. Now we're on track. I will not be chirped anymore for this number two and number one. Number two, Morgan Wallen. Okay. So, you're racist. It's okay. It makes you <laughs> – <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you know, like, <laughs> like, you know what I'm scared about, like being open, openly a fan of Morgan Wallen. Like, is yeah. that he's just gonna do this shit again in three months? You know, like, yeah. he come out and apologize. Uh, anyways, I hope he doesn't. I hope he gets his life on track. But, dude, man, I don't even know what happened. Uh, he, me, anyways, me, uh, we won't repeat. Yeah, what I'll happened. tell you after. Okay. Look, me, me saying I like Morgan Wallen is not me justifying what he did. And not absolutely, me. absolutely. Not Go me. ahead, and make that. Yeah, make that clear. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just before I get canceled with him, <laughs> yeah. I'm not, like I was not happy with what he did. I don't run his life for him, so he he did what he had to do. Yeah. Number one, as Cam said, the easiest number one of all time, Luke Combs. Mm. This man has not released a bad song yet, and he never will. Luke Combs. He's on his way to being the GOAT. Okay, Tanner, let, let, me, let me settle some beef that I have with a few friends of mine. They say that I look like Luke Combs. <laughs> Do I look like Luke Combs? I, I'm going to need you to, uh, like, take your hat off and stuff. No. I, um, the ginger beard, I'll go. Uh, it's just a beard. No, but he, he always wears a hat like this. Yeah. yeah. It's really yeah. low, and it's, like, bent over and stuff, too. But I'm gonna need you like stand up and walk around because that's really what will give it away. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> we're good, we're good. Because that man, he got like if you, <laughs> I could see it a little bit, but you know, just because you you got a beard, don't mean you look like Luke Holmes now. Yeah, Dawson didn't want to get out of his chair. He's in his boxers. <laughs> he just threw out a sweater for the podcast. All I know is Luke Combs has a hot wife, so I can't. Nothing like doing a podcast with your dick out, right? <laughs> <laughs> Better than getting cut with your dick out. Better than getting cut, <laughs> Get cut, than getting cut naked. Do a podcast with you. Woo! That's it. Okay, it's so right. my turn now. I don't have yeah. like a top five. I'm just gonna break down some artists I'll be jamming to. Okay. okay. Um. 
I'm a fan of the Kid Leroy. He's good. He makes some dope music. He's good. Um, y'all are gonna. I can't wait to hear what y'all gotta see. I am a very big fan because I played in Cleveland for a while and I was there. And I'm a very big fan of Machine Gun Kelly. I knew you that was coming. And let me tell y'all something. Before y'all want to dip on nothing, go play at Hotel Diablo and give me any of y'all's little, any of y'all's dudes over there, and I can, I'm willing to put hundreds of dollars that Machine Gun Kelly raps better than. I'm not gonna say Little Baby because Little Baby do got some flow sometimes, but like. Most of y'all's guys. For sure, what was that? Little Trey or whatever the fuck his name? Little Ty? Little Lucy Bird? No, no, Little Don't. Stop it. Stop it. Talk about Little TJ. Yeah, he's talking oh. about Little TJ. I'm not talking about Little Lucy Bird. My only issue with MGK was that he picked a beef with Eminem and, like, what okay, are you doing? But, but you can't tell me that guy went harder at Eminem than anybody ever had. No, yes. Uh, yeah, you, you could say that for sure, but it just – no one has any business picking beef with them now. It's also got uh, – At least you tried it. Like, you, you ain't going to try to – like, and technically Eminem started it. Fair enough. M- 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 I just M- have beef with him. came out with a surprise album going at Machine Gun Kelly. In that album, I think it was like 40 times in that album. Yeah. Saying a line about him. So, the man he came back. doing something right. He must be doing something right. Yeah, I just have beef with MGK because he's dating my girl. I'm gonna say she's. Uh... Have you have you seen the? Uh, I mean, freak. He had uh, Megan Fox and Summer Rae. Yeah. The dude doing something right. Y'all over there talking clearly, about clearly guys with baby mamas. He over there freaking cruising the streets with beautiful. <laughs> Somebody doing something right around here. Oh man. Yeah. Okay. Let me get. I'm trying to find some more for y'all dudes. I'm a big, like, I was a big Meek Mill, Rick, Rick Ross, Wale dude. Um, yeah. Wale is good. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm diving in that Jack Harlow stuff too now. Yeah. Jack Harlow's a banger. I'm a big Sean guy too. I like Big Sean. Can't stand him, honestly. Can't stand yeah, him. Yeah, but um, what, what album have you listened to though? Like, do you listen to any of his stuff? Yeah, every time he releases an album, uh, which one? What's, what is What's his most recent album? I forget. Let me tell you something. His best, oh, I don't, Dark Sky. It was like Dark Sky Paradise or something. Detroit. Yeah, go to Dark Sky Paradise by Big Sean is probably one of the top 10 albums. And I'm probably going to get some hate for that. But it's really freaking good. But see, look, I'm not biased out here. I love, no, no. I love all these different people because I just enjoy good music. <clears throat> I respect it. Praise that no one said Young Thug. He's pretty good, too. I'm done. I don't even want to talk about my <laughs> I'm just so – see, this is the problem with you youngins, man. Y'all be listening – y'all grew up on this this shit, so y'all don't really know good music. Y'all grew up on mumble rap. So all y'all know is, like, a good beat and, like, a few good flows, you know. Oh, shit. Okay. Bottom line, who's your number one favorite artist of all time? Of all time? Yeah. Man, that's uh, all time, huh? That's a pickle. I really don't know. I I, I just listen to so many freaking people. Uh, all time would have to probably be – dude, I don't know. I, I don't – what? Oh, yeah, for sure. That's my girl. Thank you. Chris Brown, baby. I'm a big Chris Brown. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah. Talking about when, when I was your age, dude, when I was your age, let me tell y'all something. Chris Brown was dropping hit after hit every week. Even on oh, and babe, too, too soon, babe. Um, yeah. Let's see, so Cam and Cam and Shane. <laughs> what she said. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> babe, they're Kevin Shane, Kevin Shane, like racist, and, and, you, and you like a wife beater. <laughs> yeah, no. So I'm a big Chris Brown fan, and I obviously don't support what he did to uh, his significant other, and my girlfriend doesn't either, obviously. <laughs> but um, yeah, he's got a good voice though. See, anytime my girlfriend gets a moment to like crack a joke, she's all about it. So, um, but yeah, I'm also my. 
one more person I wanted to say that I had that I just completely freaking forgot. Who the fuck? I was going to say, no, who? Black Bear. Black Bear, there it is. Y'all have a Jamison Black Bear? Nope. That oh, dude. No idea that, who that is. That dude will change your life too. Go mm-hmm. listen to, uh, um, it's called Mansions. It's an album, Mansions, with a Z at the end. If y'all, you know, y'all probably won't like it because He's it's more actually like, like the R&B it, style. Eh? It's like R&B with good, he mm-hmm. raps so amazing. He's been in the music game for a while, but he's fucking. Yeah, I heard a couple songs. He's really weird of a dude. Like you'll hear him rap and then you'll go see a picture of him. You're like, what is going on here? Um, <laughs> you'll hear him rap. But again, you guys are too young to understand that good music, man. Y'all over there like, and then it's like. <laughs> like y'all, anybody that says Migos or Future and things, a banga is, is. Y'all need to, y'all need to go. I think there's more people that are gonna that are gonna fight you saying Migos isn't a isn't a banger than than they aren't. Like, you what? Sorry. I feel like more people are gonna fight you, not liking Migos versus me liking Migos. Yeah, but who are you arguing with? Like, I'm not arguing with 20 year olds if Migos is a banger. <laughs> All right. So uh, as uh, as Mr. Texas, who's your country guy? Man, I'm a. I seen Luke Holmes live, and he was fan. Fantastic. Um, I'm a big Sam Hunt guy too, even though he has. Oh come- man, I can't believe I left him off the list. Yeah, Sam Hunt. He's. Oh, you're a big Florida Georgia Line guy, Cam. Yeah, them too. I've seen them live. They're amazing. Mm-hmm. Like, no. Yeah, matter. I can't do them. That's like I cannot do them. No. I hate Florida Georgia Line. With you know, I really don't like their hardcore like trucks and beer and. But yeah, they're just like, like, they're like they're like the hipsters of country yes music. yes i had a hundred percent agree they're they're far from my favorite oh, my window down yeah. <laughs> like, okay dude like okay like we can move on past that dude <laughs> i like uh chase rice also i'm a big fan of him uh um, oh, i've also i mean i got a lot of country guys i like i'm a, you know i do like country music unfortunately okay i don't want to be stereotyped for that shit <laughs> i don't like texas country though which is brutal. I don't know if you ever heard that, but it is. I don't know what you did. Like deep, like Amarillo by morning. It's really oh, creepy. Wow. Like it's not. You don't. Like you'll, you'll fall asleep to it. All it ain't right. no Polo G. I tell you that much. <laughs> That's facts. That's facts. All right, all right. Well, listen. That does it for episode nineteen of the Nothing But Controversy podcast. Once again, we'd like to. Th- Give a big thank you to Mr. Tanner Marsh for joining us today. Unless you listen to uh, Little Baby. Don't <laughs> uh, not applaud. Don't do it. Oh, man. Wah, wah, wah. I'm a baby. <laughs> yeah, cut it right there. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for coming, Tanner. Thank, thank you, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. Appreciate the insight. Have me on whenever y'all want, man.